are you ready? It's time. The inaugural Urban NerdCon is coming to Montgomery, Alabama, July 29th to the 31st. Blurds, nerds, and geeks from across the universe will converge on the capital city to see celebrity guests such as The Last Dragon, Tybok, Megan Tandy, and voice actor Dave Fenoy. Hey, how you doing? I'm voice actor Dave Fenoy with a shout out to all my geeks, freaks, and urban nerds. Just want to let you know I'm going to be there and I want to meet you at the Urban NerdCon Gaming and Cosplay event. It's happening July 29th through the 31st in Montgomery, Alabama. Hope you want to meet me as much as I want to meet you. So join us by visiting TheUrbanNerdCon.net for ticket and vendor information. This will be the premier blurred event in the universe. TheUrbanNerdCon.net. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See you there. For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Oh, that spin class was brutal. Oh, well, you can try using the Buick's massaging seat. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure. It's wireless. Pick something we all like. Okay, hold on. What's your Buick's Wi-Fi password? Buick Envision 2021. Oh, you should pick something stronger. That's really predictable. That's a really tight spot. Don't worry. I used to hate parallel parking. Me too. Hey. You really outdid yourself. Yes, we did. The all-new Buick Envision. An SUV built around you. All of you. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll everybody <laughs> we all go why not enjoy the go with Charmin time to call a credit repair company to fix my credit hold the phone man you can do it yourself with credit versio that's way too hard call the credit repair company most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time making it slow and expensive you won't figure that out for months <laughs> ignore him credit versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus finds the accounts that are hurting your score and guides you through the entire process anyone can do it let's fast forward and see the results <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCUPrideJoy on Facebook and Twitter. Supermarket Sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. 
standard of protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app as we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dashboard as well as the upcoming week of HBCU Sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Pleasant good morning to everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Coles Brown Show right here exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Yours truly, Coles Brown, joined by special guest co-host Charles Etma. Charles, good morning to you. Good morning, sir. How are you? Well, I'm doing fine. It's uh, another day in the land of the living. Uh, Saturday morning here in the capital city and um, it is going to be a scorcher today. I guess we'll start off with the usual <laughs> weather report. Weather in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, excessive heat warning. It will feel like 110 degrees here in Baton Rouge. But guess what? It's like uh, this in the majority of, of the country, Charles. If this is what we call the dog days of summer, it is officially here. You know, I've kind of got back in my little walking regimen. I'm starting out with 30 minutes a day. And uh, the question is, when do I get it in? In the morning, at night, in the afternoon? And I was out this morning. I got my early walk in. And at 8 o'clock, it was, it was steamy. So please be careful. Please hydrate and uh, take this thing seriously because it is hot out there. And if you're not used to it, uh, you will uh, suffer the consequences. So just be careful and take it easy. Well, you know, being here all my life, I don't know if you ever get used to it, but you have to adjust. So words, words to the wise. Guest menu on today's show. Of course, Charles Edmund joining me for the show. Also, and I'm going to practice on his name. He, he told me I could say Coach Fuse, Coach Dre Feluse. I think I just butchered it all already. <laughs> I will say Coach Fuse. Who is he? He's the running back coach at Southern University. He'll join me uh, at the bottom of uh, the first hour. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, I can at least pronounce the name correctly once. It's a South Louisiana name, Charles. Yeah, I, I thought, you know, I remember when he played, I thought it was Dre Fusile. You I, may, I might have You probably got it right. Fusile. 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 Mm -hmm. That was Dre Fuchsia Charles, give you an A for that. I get a <laughs> I'm going to be wrong grade, about that. I get a subpar grade, and, and, and I'm a native of South Louisiana. <laughs> Go figure. Go figure. Fuchsia Then in <laughs> our number two, Coach Van Petaway joins us, talking, of course, basketball and all things basketball, NBA for ages, and all of that good stuff. And then last but not least, a name – from the past, but not the far away past. Willow Brown, former director of athletics at Jackson State, now associate AD at Fort Valley State. He'll join us here on uh, the Coles Brown Show. 
Without further ado, here's what's trending on the Carlos Brown Show. Wow. Coach Chelsea Lucas is out at Grambling State University. She's the volleyball coach. And I'm just going to say this. It has been a PR nightmare for Grambling State University. I don't know the particulars of what exactly is going on behind the scene, but I will say this. I'm reminded of, of an old African proverb, two birds fighting over a kernel when the third one swooped it away. And I, and I, I, I like that proverb because Coach Lucas, the Graham administration, uh, I'm sure you can find things that both sides could have handled in a more professional way. But it is what it is, Charles. And quite simply, uh, you just got to feel for, you know, parents, coaches, student athletes, the administration, and, and, and Dr. Travian Scott, who I've had on this show uh, multiple times. It's, it's just not a, a, a good look, Charles. As a Grambling Knight myself, Carlos, this is a dark week for Grambling State Athletics, even though we're talking about volleyball, just the PR, the PR spin in the court of public opinion. You know, for me, Carlos, we've heard one side of this story. And, and by the way, I know Coach Lucas pretty well. You know, she was head volleyball coach here at Alcorn, improved the program, left there, went to UAPB, improved that program. She was 37 and 44. Matter of fact, her, uh, I think second to her last year there, she made it to the SWAC championship round against Jackson State in the COVID year. They had to forfeit that match because one of their players, UAPB players, caught COVID uh, the night before the championship game. But she improved that program. Obviously, she improved Grambling's program in the year that was uh, that, that was there. So when you look at this whole situation, Carlos, we've heard from one side. We've heard from Coach Lucas. We've heard from players. We've heard from parents. Not much has come from the Grambling side of this thing. And I'm, I know there was an independent investigation after she, she uh, cut basically her team, you know, months back. And just the swiftness of this action tells you something. You know, sometimes actions say something and sometimes actions say nothing. And the actions of Grambling and letting her go at this point in time, after they backed her, considering that she basically let her whole team go, says a lot. Now, there are some reports out there that the investigation, this in independent review is not complete. I've read some of those posts. But for them to take this action is pretty quick and pretty aggressive, considering the same administration. You're talking about President mm -hmm. Rick Gallo and AD Dr. Travian Scott hired Coach Lewis, brought her in, Coach Lucas, gave her the chance to do what she did, which was basically let her whole team go. So you support her in the action, and then a few months later, you pull the plug. That says a lot to me. And I, I'm just waiting for this independent report, this review. I'd like to see the other side of it. I'd like to see what Grambling has to say about it, if they're going to release any statements or statements about it. I don't know. Clearly, you know, there's been some information coming out after an internal investigation. We decided this was the right course of action. I'd like to get more information from on that point of it. Um, when this investigation is complete. I'd like to get more info on it myself. I'm sure it'll be public record. I'm sure somebody's going to get it. We'll get a chance to to dive into it a little bit. But bottom line is it's it's a dark, another dark week. And I, I was talking with a Gremlin Knight uh, who's at Gremlin, who's got his boots on the ground there the other day. And he said, you know what, let's just get football season started because we need to get past this. But I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. And as a Gremlin Knight, it's just it's just disappointing, you know, to have this happen because now you got volleyball players in an uproar. What's going to happen? You got a new coach. You're going to have an interim coach. Just a lot of frayed edges out there. And I'm just waiting to, uh, you know, tie the end so we can kind of see what's what. I'm going to quote my niece. She would say this is a hot mess. Yeah. And, and, and it is, you know, if we put it in, in, in layman's terms, you know, Coach Fobbs, no longer there he was he was let go and then the situation that coach Browns was hired then not hired not officially hired but was going to be brought in that 
proved to be a, a disaster. And now this with Coach Lucas and the volleyball team. Once again, from the outside looking in, just 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 not a good look. And as more information comes out, at the end of the day, you've got to make sure that your alums are happy at Grambling State. And as always, be transparent and put out the information that at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, then you can come to closure on this situation. But uh, that's that's one of the things trending here on the Carlos Brown Show. Hugh Evans, North Carolina a and and former NBA referee, Charles, um, passed away at 81 years and uh, was a member of the 2022 class of the Nate Smith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. North Carolina a and alum, and, and you remember him um, you know, on on television, the NBA referee. And one thing about him, uh, he was stern, but he was not overly animated. You know, he would give a technical when it when when someone deserved it. But you know, we talk about NBA officials, and, and maybe we'll talk with Coach Petaway about it and get his take on it. Uh, when you look at it, I think they really control the game out of the big three umpires. Football officials and basketball, boy, on a professional point, Charles, man, they don't play. But, um, you know, he played basketball at North Carolina a and and had a great career. So uh, journey well, he happens, passed, passed away at 81 years of age. Marino Kassam to be inducted into the Xavier Hall of Fame. And, 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 and Charles, we know the godfather is affectionately known who stated that Saturday was a holy day of passage, of rights for football in the South. And I, I'm sure you can, uh, you have some many stories that you could tell about uh, Coach Kassam. I, I'll, I'll share one. And, you know, he, along with Jewel Promise, Mama Jaguar, were two individuals that I would be afraid, literally, when they called me over to talk to me, I'm like, uh-oh, what did I do wrong? But but the godfather was a, uh, a disciplinarian, uh, outstanding football coach, later director of athletics, and we remember, remember him fondly at, at Southern University. But, um, of course, he has journeyed into power now, but uh, the, the awards still come for Coach Marino Kassam, the godfather, Charles. Yeah, the one thing, you know, I, when I was at uh, my time at Alcorn, he, he, he was brought in as interim athletics director for a short period of time. And I remember sitting in his office and I heard the stories from Shirley Walker and other coaches when Coach Kassam was football coach well before I, I got to Alcorn. And the one thing that he was he's told to me, and this is an old saying here. Uh, the first time I've heard it with my own ears, he said, you know, tough times never last, but tough people do. And, you know, if you just take a look at what we got going on right now, I mean, tough times. We're dealing with tough times. Grambling Athletics is dealing with tough times. Tough times never last, but tough people do. And I think that that's very, very appropriate for what we're dealing with right now. But just very professional, funny. Um, you know, he was, he was a member of the 1871 Club, which was a, a group that paid $1,871 for you know, season tickets and VIP parking and all that. He was a member of that. And until he passed, he was at pretty much every home game, you know, with his with his health and dealing with that. So, you know, as you said, even even though he's in a better place, the awards keep on keeping off of Coach Castle. And, and just another short story. Uh, he was director of athletics at Southern University. And, and again, when he called me, I immediately kind of like, uh-oh, what's going on? So he told me to come on in, and I sat down with him, and I was nervous, I'm going to admit. And so I was there to kind of look at uh, the Bayou Classic, the numbers, uh, the financial reward. He didn't say much. He just pointed to a number, okay? That's what they brought in from the Bayou Classic. Then he pointed on paper to what athletics actually 
uh, received. And I, I was just literally shocked, just shocked. And he said, now, Brother Brown, if this gets out and it gets back to me, I'll know where this came from because you are the radio man. He didn't have to give me any more warnings after that. But that's just the kind of guy. And then uh, one time he, he was telling me about he was always extra tough. And he was a tough coach, tough person. But he was extra tough on freshmen because he said freshmen, when they come in, they can learn great habits, good habits, but they also can learn bad habits. So he was extra tough on them. But uh, oh, many more stories I can, uh, can tell. <laughs> the last one, Charles, flying on the plane, coming back from the uh, celebration bowl, and him and his lovely wife, uh, our flight was delayed. So we, we had a chance to sit in the waiting area and, and talk. And um, boy, I can't reveal what that conversation was about, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it was animated, to, to say the, the, the least. Rest on, journey well, Coach Casson. And then last but not least, there was an article from uh, Claren Ledger. I don't know if you saw it, Charles, but which SWAC football stadium has been the toughest to play in the past decade? Now, the key is to play at in the past decade. I actually agree with the author of number one, Alcorn State. And guess what? I've been there for regular season games, SWAT championship games, and it's a humbling experience, but a great atmosphere. So I will agree with the number one place, the toughest place to play is Alcorn State. And then number two is A.W. Mumford State. Man, for a while, Charles, after they installed the new turf, they didn't lose a football game for quite a while, but then they lost to uh, – Alcorn State, and then last year, what they lost homecoming, they lost Jackson State and FAMU and McNeese. So they lost four games at home. Unheard of, unheard of. But it happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thoughts on that, Charles? And then we'll get to our first time out. Well, I mean, you know, when Jack Spinks Marino Castle Stadium is packed and rocking, it's one of the toughest places in college football to go in there and win. Um, and, and we saw that, you know, the anniversary of uh, Steve McNair's passing was this this week, July the 4th. And you could just, you know, reflect on the times in which that stadium was packed with McNair doing his magic against Southern University amongst other teams, as, as, as you know. But that, you know, I've seen that stadium when it's packed, when we've had the SWAC championship game there, bringing in the portable grandstands. It is an amazing environment, and you see it on social media. You see the videos. It, I, I totally agree with the with the poll. Mumford Stadium, when 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 uh, when Southern's band is rocking and Southern's playing well, that's a tough place to play and win. So, you know, a lot of these stadiums are getting tougher. I think you know Veterans Memorial, sixty thousand in there. They had fifty thousand three times last year. That's a tough place. So I think you know all these facilities, all these stadiums are tough when the teams are playing well. And so, but I agree. Jack Spinks Marino Castle Stadium is as good as it gets. One of the best game day atmospheres and a tough place to come out of there and win. Well, the good thing is, and I agree, uh, I haven't visited every stadium in the conference. That's on the bucket list to do. Hadn't been to Prairie View Stadium. Um, I, I actually, haven't been to Texas Southern Stadium, but I've been to Houston when Southern has uh, played. Texas Southern and, and, and different uh, locations. Uh, actually went to, uh, it wasn't called Titan uh, Rice Stadium at the time, but years ago uh, in, the, in the 80s <laughs> to eat a beaner. Um, when, you, when you're a teenager at that point, Charles, it feels like you're going to the end of the earth. What a long <laughs> trip. And then uh, a passenger with my grandmother, and my grandfather, wow, just wow, Charles. It, it felt like it took eight hours to get there. And then they <laughs> left after the game, driving back, and, and, and it's pitch black. Not a good experience. And by the way, Southern lost a football game as well. Uh, but, with that, <laughs> but with that being said, uh, the excitement is building for the 2022 
uh, football uh, season. But um, we will go through the whole list before we end today's show. So to, to, to your, that's what's to your point, Carl. So to, to your point, I haven't been to uh, FAMU. I haven't been to Bragg Stadium, a newly renovated Bragg Stadium, by the way. As if you've seen the pictures out there, you know, putting in new grandstands. Mm -hmm. I think I read something this week. They got a new press box coming. So uh, that's one venue oh. I haven't been to, Thank and I'm, I'm looking forward to going to Tallahassee one year to see to uh, to to see that to see that great venue and, and just the atmosphere. You've seen the pictures. I think Grambling went there last year or the year before for their homecoming. Mm -hmm. And man, that is that that atmosphere is off year. the charts. Yeah, last year, yeah. So that that atmosphere is off the charts there. So I'm looking forward, you know, whenever FAMU rolls on our schedule, I'm looking forward to going down there and, and seeing that environment. Because I haven't been to uh I've I have not been to Tallahassee either. So I'm I'm kind of looking forward to that and seeing Bragg Stadium. Well, another quick story. Um, you remember the late Greg Brichel? I was part of the broadcast crew and we rented a nice cargo van. Gas prices wasn't high then. And uh, we made the trip to Tallahassee. It was their homecoming. Southern, uh, I think undefeated, ranked number two. And uh, back then, they called it a 1AA poll. And wow, it was their homecoming. It was packed. And, and the campus and just the, you know, the fans, it, it reminded me of, A.W. Mumford Stadium, Coach Richardson. So it was packed. It was homecoming. Met Tom Joyner, J. Anthony Brown. They came up into the press box, which if you sneeze, you're outside. It was that small. So <laughs> kudos that they're getting a, a new press box. But the atmosphere was electric. Final score, 33-3. to Fam you. And I, and I, I want to say, if it was not the game, because I went there again and Southern lost 63-18, to but um, the band, when they got up to perform, the crowd had basically gotten to where they were seating. So you had to get the officials to, to, to move the, the, the people out. But boy, they were fired up. And Billy Joe and Coach Richardson, that was truly, truly a rivalry. So I, I've had the pleasure to be at the uh, Old Brack Stadium twice. Hadn't been to Bethune Cookman. I actually haven't been to um, Alabama State's new stadium, or even when they played in the Crampton Bowl, that's been uh, renovated. So uh, Pine Bluff, ha I haven't been to their stadium, but when I uh, went to the ball game with uh, UAPB and, and, and Southern, they always played in Little Rock when it was their home, uh, their home game. So it's going to be interesting. We'll get a chance to, 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 to look at that. But to recap quickly, uh, Coach Lucas let go, the volleyball coach at Grambling State uh, University. Hugh Evans passed, passed away, North Carolina a t alum and NBA official, and a Marino Cassim inducted into the Xavier Hall of Fame. Uh, got his degree there from Xavier. And uh, a Memphis native goes to college in New Orleans. So with that being said, Charles, um, we're going to take a time out. I've been informed that uh, Coach Fuse, <laughs> running back coach for Southern University, is waiting. I'm going to have to practice on that name. Charles, say it again. Dre Fusile. Dre Fusile. Coach Fusile. Coach Fusile. Yeah. I, I believe that's correct. I might be wrong. He'll tell us in a minute. We we need we do need to get that pronunciation correct. But I I, I was told this years even when he was playing, I was told it's fusile. So we'll we'll find out. Yeah, I think he did tell me it's probably not pronounced the way it is spelled. But Coach Dre Fusile joins me <laughs> next. You're watching. You're watching the Carlos Brown show on the Black College Sports Network. 
Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Yes, sir, I'm here. Goddamn. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. Oh, we've got a good Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock in downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992 or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, authentic Caribbean cuisine. We are making the virtual HBCU experience available wherever you live through Stillman Online. We offer online degrees in business, criminal justice, psychology, and religion. Stillman also offers technology badges in cybersecurity and data analytics. You can participate in all student activities, fraternities and sororities, internships, graduation ceremonies, and much more. Apply for admission today at stillman.edu. Stillman College where we prepare you for a different world. T. Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turn my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Are you ready? It's time. The inaugural Urban NerdCon is coming to Montgomery, Alabama, July 29th through the 31st. Blurds, nerds, and geeks from across the universe will converge on the capital city to see celebrity guests such as The Last Dragon, Tybok, Megan Tandy, and voice actor Dave Fennoy. Hey, how you doing? I'm voice actor Dave Fennoy with a shout out to all my geeks, freaks, and urban nerds. Just want to let you know I'm going to be there and I want to meet you at the Urban Nerd Con Gaming and Cosplay event. It's happening July 29th through the 31st in Montgomery, Alabama. Hope you want to meet me as much as I want to meet you. So join us by visiting theurbannerdcon.net for ticket and vendor information. This will be the premier blurred event in the universe. TheUrbanNerdCon.net. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See you there. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Now, I'm going to visit with Coach Dre Fusile, running back coach at Southern University. Coach, good morning. I'm laughing because I've been practicing on, on that name, a South Louisiana native. I've improved a little bit, but I'm I grade tough. I can do better. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning to you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Well, pleasure to have you on the Carlos Brown show. And uh, of course, coach, I'm going to have a conversation here on, on this week's edition. I want to ask first and foremost, getting into coaching. I know you previously played running back at Grandma State University, uh, running back coach mm -hmm. at Prairie View a and but after your playing days, talk about getting into coaching and what was the inspiration for getting into coaching? Uh, uh, my 
my inspiration to get into coaching, uh, I actually started coaching at Grand State University. Uh, I wasn't actually at Princeton Coach Dooley. Uh, I played for him while I was at Grambling. Uh, so just being around him and guys like Coach Roger Five, my running back coach at the time in college was Coach Lee Five, which is Coach Five's dad. Uh, my original senior year, 16, I tore my right ACL first game of the season. Um, and I stuck around the program after I had surgery, went to every travel, every day. But not only that, uh, throughout practice, we, during practice, I was around the defensive coordinator, uh, the O.C. at the time, Coach Dooley. I was just able to get a different view of the game, see why coaches were on like on us, why they were so detailed, why the technical things matter. So for me just seeing the different scope, I kind of fell in love with that part of the process. And then also uh, I shared with Martez Carter. I used to teach him a lot of things that he was able to see and talk about and things like uh, just being a, a, a student of the game and helping my face out too. Uh, so that's kind of how I got started with coaching. So uh, after the 2017 season, I knew I was like, I could come back the same person as I was on the field. So I kind of, me going to the NFL was kind of far fetched, but I did love the game of football. So right after that celebration bowl, when we lost to AT, we came back in January. First day we were back on campus, I walked into our coach's meeting room and I asked Coach Files about DA. And he was like, uh, well, Fuse, I'll give you a call later today once I talk with Daddy Files, which is his dad. And um, maybe about 4.30, 5 o'clock that afternoon when he called me back and said, can you be here tomorrow morning for 7 o'clock? I was like, sure, Coach. And I was there at 6. I was the first guy in the building. I wanted to let them know how serious I was about it. So for me, it was kind of a surreal moment, um, just being on the other side and being in the meeting room, the staff room, with the coaches who was, who was coaching the previous season. Um, they just poured it to me. I was fun. I soaked up everything. Which is always just wanted to be a student of the game and get better um, and learn from those guys. From there, everything it just took off. Coach, let me do this. We kind of have a bad connection. Uh, we're going to take a commercial break and come back and see if we can get you uh, in a better sounding space. All right. We'll just take yes, a sir. quick time out. All right. We'll take a quick time out. You're watching the Coles Brown show on the black college sports network. For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival. This is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster absorbs even more so you can feel dry and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. Nope. Nope. Come on, him? Ooh, I like him. <laughs> The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. Oh, that spin class was brutal. Well, you can try using the Buick's massaging seat. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure. It's wireless. Pick something we all like. OK, hold on. What's your Buick's Wi-Fi password? Buick Envision 2021. Oh, you should pick something stronger. That's really predictable. That's a really tight spot. Don't worry. I used to hate parallel parking. Me, Me too. too. Hey. You really outdid yourself. Yes, we did. The all-new Buick Envision, an SUV built around you. All of you. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillars of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Sorry. 
Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? Time to call a credit repair company to fix it. There we go. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. Coach, we're going to pick it back up with you. But for, for the record, um, you said you were not the running backs coach or you didn't coach at Prairie View? No, sir, I didn't. I was at Grandma the whole time. Okay. Okay. Well, I was in error on that one, so I apologize for that. But <laughs> speaking of that – now, you're at Southern University as a running back coach. Um, kind of talk about that, your thoughts on coaching at Southern University, playing against Southern University in your collegiate days, now coaching at Southern University. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for the, for the opportunity. I'm excited. Um, I'm, uh, just really wanted to be – really want to coach for Coach Dooley. Uh, he's a great coach, a uh, great man of God, a leader of young men. And just myself being able to play for him in college, uh, I, it was all, it was a no-brainer. He gave me the call and asked me if I wanted to be a running back coach. I said, Coach, I'm there. Uh, I moved to Baton Rouge in maybe a week or less, and I was here. As far as coaching at Southern, I know the rich history of Southern. I was able to meet and talk to Coach Pete Richardson on several occasions. Uh, also, Coach Terrence Brave played for him and coached for him, too. Uh, one of my mentors who told me a lot about Coach Pete Richardson and just Southern um, I know what type of shoes we have to fill, and I know this is my next assignment, so I'm ready for it. Coach Dooley, a lot of people um, here in Baton Rouge and across the country in the Southwest Athletic Conference, they know of him. They know him. He has been called um, an offensive guru. But the person on the field, but how about your relationship with, with Coach Dooley? Uh, all off the field, I, I like to call him the silent assassin because he's 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 not flamboyant, but he just gets things done. Uh, my relationship with Coach Dooley off the field, I mean, it's great. Uh, even once I started coaching, he was always you know there for me if I needed to talk to him about certain things. Uh, uh, even if I just called and checked on him, he called and checked on me. Uh, I know every year for his birthday, he runs a forty-yard dash. Uh, his birthday is actually coming up this week. So uh, I'm interested to see what his time is going to be. <laughs> and so he still looks like he's Coach in shape. Dooley, he's always a sir. No, I say he still looks like he he can play football. He's, oh yeah, he, he looks in great shape. Runs, he runs A W Mumford every week. He, he runs the stadium. He, he still gets. It. So um, and Coach Dooley, my thing, one of the biggest things that I took from Coach Dooley as playing for him is the confidence that he pours into his players, and I think that is something that carried over me. Um, that's going to carry over with me for a lifetime. So just for him to be able to pour that into young men, and I think he, he's just a, a blessing. He's a blessing to these young men. I can't I can't say anything bad about him. The man's a great guy. Great guy. Great guy. Charles, I'm sure you have a uh, question or two for Coach. Yeah, just, just talk about your running game. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, in today's – what we're seeing in the SWAC right now is with these new quarterbacks, different quarterbacks, and obviously a quarterback's best friend is the running game. Talk about Southern's running attack this year. What do you, what do you expect out of that group? I'm expecting some great things out of this group, but I'm going to have some electrifying players. Uh, when you talk about a guy like uh, J.J. Sims that's coming back, he can ground and pound it. He can also take it the distance. A guy like Kobe Dillon uh, rushed for 250-plus yards last in the single game, I mean, that, that's phenomenal in itself. And then I also added Kendrick Ryan. He's an electrifying player. He can do it all. Uh, then you also have a guy like Braylon Morgan from Calico Baton Rouge. 
he's also electrifying too as well. I think that's a guy that a lot of people don't really know about, but it's a role for him in our offense. Uh, also, I have a freshman coming in, Carl Ligon, just with uh, the state champion in, in Alabama. He can do it all. Uh, Trey me and Benjamin, a lot of people forget about him. He's had an injury through his career, but he's from Samoanville, Louisiana. He can get the job done. So the room is loaded. It's stacked right now. Um, I have high expectations for these guys throughout the summer. Well, really from the spring, from some, some spring workouts now to the summer. This is a hardworking group, a close-knit group. They understand that I can't play everybody, but whoever's the best man at the time, I, I'm confident that he can get the job done. Now, Charles, that and, and great uh, question there because on on my notes, I had Southern University running back room loaded and deep, and Coach just answered that. Well, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper, Coach. Mm -hmm. With all of that talent in the running back room, uh, O line that you have some um, veterans coming back, and and those running backs can't do it by themselves. They got to have those big guys up front. And then with Coach Dooling and the receivers coach, he has to be, you have to be, you can be so creative with a deep and talented running back uh, room. Will we see anything different as far as running backs <laughs> being even more involved in the offense besides running in the passing game, etc.? Well, I believe um, if you really look closely at Coach Dooley's offense, uh, the running back is always used in multiple situations and put in different situations from years, uh, from years to come now. So uh, I think with us being loaded at all skill positions, especially up front, having those guys up front that can really protect and run block, you will see what Coach Dooley does best, and that's to run his race cars offense. Uh, he's going to do what he does, uh, and I believe he, he'll put out my running back Best situation, you put the receivers in the best situation, the quarterbacks in the best situation, and our old line they'll hold up and they'll protect and what they need to do for us to be successful. So, I think it'll be a collective effort from all field positions and up front. And also, we have some tight ends too, we have some really good tight ends too, as well. Right, I understand that. But, but back to uh, Braylon Morgan, that you know, certain times you look at a roster and then you look where a young man. A uh, student athlete has come from him being Catholic high school in Baton Rouge. Uh, I, I'm really pulling for him because he's very talented. And his former high school coach I interviewed on the show, and he talked about him, uh, his talent on the field. And also, I asked him point blank, where did he think Southern would utilize him? Because he said he can also uh, play defensive back. But talk about uh, him. And, and you made the point that, hey, you can't play everybody, but it will be determined in practice who's going to get playing time. Uh, just speaking on Braylon Morgan, uh, he's a phenomenal kid. A lot of it. Uh, he's very fine, very fine. I mean, he's a kid that's going to take chances. Uh, just me watching him and evaluating him draw, I think he'll be a perfect dynamic for our uh, and we'll, we'll be able to utilize him. And the special thing about Braylon Morgan, he's out of high So. Um, I'm familiar with the name, what he can do. So, uh, like I always tell him, it's a role for you. It's up to you to go and take that and uh, be that player. Coach, can you see uh, some of those players in the running back room to, to, you know, get the best talent on the field? Can they be utilized maybe in kickoff returns, punt returns, or am I – overstepping my bounds with that question because I, I know you have a special teams coach, Coach Graves. Yeah, I mean, uh, those guys, you know, usually you want to use some running backs in the current game, guys that have done two running backs. Uh, it'll all be predicated off of practice, whoever can get the job done too as well. Um, I know with myself, me personally, and I tell my guys also, being that we are stacked and only running back, I'm going to vouch for those guys to get on some special teams too as well. And help our team out in those places. Charles and Coach, it is a great time to be coaching and playing in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. The growth, uh, you know, potential new TV contract coming up. Um, talk about the bond between uh, the coaches 
not only on on the staff you're on at Southern University, but with other staffs uh, in the conference. And you know, like when you guys go to conference conventions, how how strong is the, those bonds between uh, you, Southern staff, and the other staffs in in the conference? I think the bond is really good. We all understand. You know, we all have one one goal that that we we meet in the middle with, and that's the just it's important to these young men want the best for them too as well you know we have to lock it up Saturdays, but um when you see each other at camps and the conventions and things like that all oh, um and just speaking as far as our staff man i love our staff to be honest uh, I love our staff. I, the chemistry that we have uh it's, it's unmatched in person uh yeah a mix of older guys and a mix of younger guys too and i think coach Dula did a, a good job with mixing the staff in diverse staff for us to eat. Visit with Coach Fuse. I'm going to say Coach Fuse this time. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, if, if, if that's, a, that's a, all right. Um, you mentioned about the staff and, and, and the bonding. Off the field, what is one thing that you guys have bonded, uh, an activity that you guys have done in the last, say, month or two that has been very excited and helped that bond get even even stronger uh, well every thursday morning we have bible study um I think that's a big that's a big thing that's brought us together to, you know see grown men say things that about their personal life that you don't usually you won't usually hear from daily but then not only that becoming closer with god being able to settle me as a young guy I think it's been very vital to my life and my my progression becoming a better man close to as well. So I think that's one thing that's really helped us become uh, stronger and have a, a closer bond. That's outstanding because, you know, we often think, Charles, about coaches and, um, you know, you see them in one light, the, the head coach, he's, he's seen as the figurehead, of course, but as I've often stated, Position coaches are so important. They do a lot of the instruction and the coaching, um, and they're not per se coordinators, but but Charles, they they do a lot, and uh, I, I try to give them credit whenever I can, uh, and that's why I like to have position coaches coaches on the show. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's so critical to have those you know those assistant coaches because they're the eyes and ears of the of the head coach. But, but, but coach, I want to ask you just in terms of, you know, coming together and during this time of year with the players there, you know, how important is this time right now for everyone? Because you're in summer school, camp starts officially in, in another few weeks, but right now it's about conditioning. How important is this time of the year? Bonding, you know, I was looking at a video, Grambling had something uh, at their stadium, a slip and slide, a family event, just to try to break the monotony. Um, how important is this time right here? Here we are mid-July, coming off the 4th of July holiday. Players are there. You're hitting the weights. You're running. You're doing all these things. How important is this time for you, for your staff, and for the players during this period of time? I think it's very important. Uh, in my eyes, this is where the championship is won. Um, it's not won in December. It's won in the summertime where you get prepared to go and make that home stretch to uh, win a swag team. The celebration bowl as well. Uh, as far as our players come together, uh, we we do cookouts for guys. And they have been bonding and getting to know each other. Of course, with some transfers coming in, guys who are ready. So those guys are gonna know each other a whole lot more. Um, with those guys being in the summer school too as well. So seeing each other almost every week, I think it's doing it's, it's been doing wonders for us. Um, as far as them working on the field and in the weight room, we've been hearing nothing great things from our strength and conditioning staff. Uh, even looking at those guys. Bodies changing. Um, just seeing them, just, just knowing the work that they're putting in and the chemistry we're building, and we're getting a better, we're building a better bond as a team. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. So I think this beating potatoes of this team, and so far, it's so good for. Me. I got, I got one speak. more question, Carlos. I got Go one more question. What's that Bayou Classic we going to be like for you, Coach? A grambling out on one end and then the Jaguar right now. How's that Bayou Classic we going to be for you? And it's another game. 
It's another game. I always tell people the thing that prepared me for that that prepared me for that moment is going and playing against Coach Dula at Prairie View. Um, I, I joke with him about it all the time. Uh, me getting into it, and you know, I go. We we played them uh, um, the Cotton Bowl. So I'm thinking, as a young coach, you know, my old offensive coordinator, he's on the other side. He's the coach. You know, maybe I might tap him up or something before the game. So I come out of the locker room, and I see him on the other side, and he's just mugged up. So in my mind, I had to snap out of it. I'm like, well, it's time to go to war now. It's, you know, you know how it's size. It's time to go to war. So, you know, the body classic could be another game. Uh, but we'll, we'll worry about that when we get to that. Oh, yeah, because, uh, Coach, now with with social media and, oh, my goodness, it, it's a rivalry. It's a different type of rivalry than, say, a Southern and Jackson State. I won't get started on that one, but uh, I, I just want that game. Southern has taken care of business beforehand. And in, in the past, it's come down to the win of that game representing the West. I hope that is not the case. It's done before that Bayou Classic because then it's still going to be a good old-fashioned knuckle. It's going to be some knuckles in that game, but – <laughs> but speaking of that, there. back to the, the bonding. Now, you, you can be honest. I know Coach mm -hmm. Miller, Boo Boo, yes, he sir. is a barbecue master. Yes, indeed. I'm sure he, he has taken care of everybody. Am I correct about that? You correct about that. Absolutely correct. Boo Boo's brisket, the best. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Give him a plug now, Charles. Outstanding, and um, yes, I'm gonna get a chance. He has offered me a chance to uh, critique the food. I'm already giving him an A plus. How about that? <laughs> and, and, and speaking of that, Coach, you've been for South Louisiana. What is your favorite meal? If someone My asked you, meal. right, your favorite meal? Man, it's it's, it's a plethora of things. Uh, <laughs> if I had to go with my favorite meal, it probably would be my dad gumbo. My dad, he he he, he can throw down. So it would probably be my dad gumbo. Seafood gumbo. Wow. He just it's amazing. You gotta have it with the potato salad. If you're not eating with the potato salad, you're wrong. <laughs> I, I, you can't disagree with that, right, Charles? Although I, I can't <laughs> eat seafood gumbo, but I can do the chicken and the, and the sausage gumbo. But with the potato salad, that's right. Yes, Excellent sir. response, Coach. Excellent. Coach, it's been interesting. It's been an interesting conversation. Um, the running back room, deep and loaded. For those just tuning in, um, you can look for a lot of excitement putting that deep and loaded running back room with uh, the offensive coordinator and the head coach, Coach Dooley. Offensively, it could be exciting. It could be, it will be exciting. Um, most people, when they think of Coach Dooley and this offense, they think about a pass heavy offense. But when I looked at Prairie View stats, I look at a offense that is balanced because you're so concerned with getting straight with, 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 with coach Dooley, his offense going vertical. Then they come back and hit you with the, the, the running game. How important is it to be balanced offensively? I think it's very important. Uh, coach Dooley, he just, he, I, can, I can't say it enough. He's going to put his guys in the best situation. I know sometimes that cliche, but me working with him and paying for him, um, it's honest, that's what that's what he does a great job of doing, um, just putting guys in situation. So a lot of guys would think, you know, because you know you'll see big plays happening in the passing game as well as passing offense. But some guys, some people seem to forget about the running back that coach had in the offense too as well. So uh, I agree with you on that. It's very bad offense. Charles, a closing question, a comment. No, I mean, I, I think you're exactly right. You know, for me, it's like with all these new quarterbacks coming in and new coaches, I think the, we don't talk enough, Coach, about the running game. 
You know, Alcorn's going to have a new quarterback, Southern. The importance of being to have a balanced attack and being able to run the football to take the pressure off the quarterbacks, I think that's going to be key this year more so than just about any year we've seen in the conference lately. Yes, sir. Well, on that note, Coach, uh, we appreciate you taking some time. I know it's kind of a relaxed time in a way before – uh, you guys get ready for fall camp, but um, exciting times at Southern University. And uh, it's great to have you on the staff in Baton Rouge now to uh, be able to uh, see this side of the rivalry at Southern University. Sir, I'm glad to be here. Man. Glad to be here. I can't wait for the season to come and just hear that jukebox rocking and then also just seeing that sea of uh, Columbia blue and gold. Oh, yeah. Well, and you look at the schedule, Coach, and you start off at home, Florida Memorial, then you go across town uh, to uh, uh, LSU, and then, of course, you got Alcorn State at home. Uh, the guy you've been talking to, he's the broadcaster, the play-by-play -play guy for Alcorn State. So I know his ears, uh, you may not see it, but I can see them. They are really up their antennas. And then, you got, and then you got Jackson State uh, on the road, fam. You so uh, interesting schedule. But we wish you guys the best and appreciate you uh, coming on. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, Coach, and we'll talk again real soon. Yes, sir. Appreciate y'all. All right. Go Jags. <laughs> that was Coach Dre Ushale. Running back coach for Southern University, uh, uh, Charles. Um, when we look at it, the running back room is deep for Southern University. He talked about, uh, you know, the luxury of having that, uh, but they also know they also realize that they've got to, you know, with all the accolades, they've got to get it done on the football field. And and I know a lot of uh, the coaches. It, it, it's pressure uh, to to win. Uh, talking to members of the staff they realize that they have to come in and win right away. So they, they know the pressure, they acknowledge the pressure. And so with that being said, hey, a couple of weeks, Swag Football Media Day, Charles, then fall camp, and then before you know it, what, less than 60 days now? Mm -hmm. Kick off the college football season. You know, I've, I've said this from, from the moment that Dooley was hired. I thought it was a good hire. And just as you read about his staff, I've been impressed with his staff and just, you know, a lot of Southern flavor, a lot of swag flavor. Of course, guys that he's familiar with. So, I mean, I've been very impressed with Coach Dooley and his staff. And I think that helps. I think that helps in dealing with the pressure when you have coaches on your staff that fans are familiar with. And I think that helps a lot in dealing with the pressure because we know it's a pressure packed job anyway. And so I, I've really been impressed with, with coach Dooley's staff and uh, coach Fusile. I remember him when he was at Grambling running that football and he's running that running backs room. I think, you know, Southern is stacked at, at the running back. You know, you got Dylan, you know, we, we talked about him, didn't we? 252 yards against uh, Texas Southern. It wasn't used quite as much against all corn, um, if I remember. But you know he's a he's a stud, and if, and if if he is if he's healthy and that running back room is straight, that takes pressure off the quarterbacks. You know, Dooley likes to have his quarterback sling it down the field. It could be a very 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 interesting and exciting time for Southern offensively. Braylon Morgan, that's a name to to remember. About 5'9", 5'10", 5'8", 5'9", 5'10". Played running back at Catholic High Defending State Champions. Um, you just got to get him somewhere on that field, that football field. Uh, just just ter terrific. The young man, and his name escapes me, Coach mentioned, from Kilgore Junior College. He's special as well. Uh, then you got Sims, who's good, coming out the backfield, catching the ball, running the ball. You remember him. You've seen him. His toughness showed at that, oh, swag, oh, 2019 championship. Charles, I still say, that was there for Southern to take, and they didn't get it done. 
but you know, wide receiver, but as impressive as offensive that they've recruited Southern University, I think defensively with, with Dumas and Jordan Lewis. Defensively, they've made some tremendous strides as well. So this team on paper, they have everything they need. Now it's just a matter of getting it done, Charles. And that goes for every team in the conference. Um, you talked about Mississippi Valley State and their improvement. Alabama a and they've gone to transfer a portal big time. Jackson State, the defending champion. What will Alcorn do? Alcorn State, I mean, they've had some tremendous success in the past five, six years. Six and five is what they ended up last year. That is not uh, that is not a good record. It's a winning record, but to the standards that Alcorn has looked at. So will they improve? Texas Southern, they, they've got a tremendous quarterback, and they look to improve. UAPB, Prairie View, not a lot of people are discussing Prairie View, defending Western Division champions, a new coach. It's going to be interesting to see how all of this plays out. I mean, we'll look – back we'll go back to the summer and then at the end of the season to see how it all played out let's see how close we are and charles get ready for your predictions you gotta have your predictions uh, for swag media day so start looking at that as well yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to that and and we talked about it the west is 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 up for grabs i mean previews are defending you know western division champs but you got a new coach uh, well, interesting to see what the prognosticators, the SIDs and coaches, what they feel about it. Um, the coach that won the West is at Southern University. You know, Alcorn's going to have a new quarterback. Their, their running back room is stocked as well. Um, and, and so you look at Grambling, what will, what will Hugh Jackson? You know, I was told, Carlos, a little bird told me when I was at Grambling for the softball uh, matchup a few Uh-oh. months ago that Grambling, Grambling could have as many – as six quarterbacks on that roster by the time fall camp starts next month. Six. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. Six. Six quarterbacks. Six. Six. But well, wait six. a minute. If you have six, I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm gonna shoot a dig here. If you got six, <laughs> you have none. Well, I'm just saying it's going to be important. I, I I agree with you, and I'm like I'm like I talked to this person and said, "Are you serious?" And at that time, they had four quarterbacks on the roster then. They're going to get another couple of them from the transfer portal. But I was told, hey, Hugh Jackson's a quarterback guru. He likes quarterbacks. So Grandma could have as many as six quarterbacks on the roster by the time camp starts. They they might have them on campus now, as far as we know. So that will be an interesting story to follow. You know, obviously, uh, obviously, Bowden transferred. But it'll be interesting to see there with six quarterbacks potentially on that roster. Who's going to come out of that, you know, as, as they play Arkansas State, I believe, to start it off. So it, it'll be interesting to see how, how the West is going to turn out. There's a picture behind me. You, you kind of can see my diploma from Southern University 2010 and then a picture behind that. That's Frank and Beverly of Mays. I, I'm going to ask him. I'm going to see if I can get a prediction from him on this <laughs> because everybody i know has jackson state in their grasp they have been, they've done a tremendous job but guess what because and i'll preface this by saying because to me the jackson state southern game that is a tremendous rivalry it's different than grandma state southern Loss for the first time in what nine nine years to Jackson State. I want a new streak started, and it's hopefully going to happen October 29th, my birthday in Jackson. Woo, Charles! <laughs> I'm gonna party all weekend, and hopefully I'll be happy at the uh, end of Saturday night, and then Sunday when I'm leaving out of Jackson, Mississippi, coming back to Baton Rouge. That's gonna be. I think that's gonna. Smash records. That's going to be a record oh. crowd, I believe. Particularly if Southern University comes in with a winning record, which I'm sure they are. But even if it's the opposite, that is going to be a tremendous uh, ball game, October the 29th. It, absolutely, it will be. And you know, I agree, it will be a record crowd. I mean, you might have 
65,000 in the stadium and probably another 30,000 outside of Veterans Memorial Stadium. I mean, that will be, uh, and, and you know, Southern has 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 to get a little revenge. I mean, Shadour Sanders threw a dime down the stretch against uh, Southern down there in, in at Mumford Stadium. Like Southern had the lead, and Jackson just snatched it right out of their hands. And uh, Jackson State snatched it right out of their hands. So it'll be interesting to see if Southern can, uh, as they say, get their lick back. Yeah, eight, eight game winning streak broken. I got three fingers. I'm holding up. Third down. One third down, two thirds down. You complete those, and Southern wins the ball game. Even <laughs> coming into the game with a losing record. So, hey, I guess enough of that. Uh, it's going to be tremendous, tremendous games uh, being played this season in the Southwest Athletic Conference. Take a time out when um, I come back. We we'll visit with Coach. Van Pettaway here on the Carlos Brown Show. And I uh, just want to say good afternoon to everyone in the chat room. I'm um, kind of looking at some of the uh, conversations that are going on. So uh, appreciate everyone uh, watching. We'll kind of go in and give some names. You know, shout outs to them before we end the show. You're watching. The Carlos Brown Show, right here on the Black College Sports Network. We shall return. Time to call a credit repair company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. Let's fast forward and see the results. Wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids' apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. Supermarket Sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? Oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Standard protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube Spreaker, or the BCSN app, as we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dash, as well as the upcoming week of HBCU sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Are you hungry for authentic Caribbean food? Like jerk, chicken, oxtail, red snapper, shrimp, tofu, and rasta pasta? Well, find your way over to Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Pika in downtown Atlanta. Full, but we Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, open daily from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And on Friday and Saturday, we're open till 4 a.m. Come to Mango's and put some spice in your life. Oh, we've got a Mango's Caribbean Restaurant, 180 Auburn Avenue, right next to Royal Peacock. In downtown Atlanta. For more info or directions, call 404-698-3992. Or log on to mangoscaribbeanrestaurant.com. For instant coupons, text M-A-N-G-O-S to 313131. Tell your mama hungry, papa hungry, brother hungry. Mango's Caribbean Restaurant. Authentic Caribbean cuisine.
that's a perfect song. We are one. And you know why? Because Coach Petaway joins us now, Alabama <laughs> and m guy. Charles Edmund, Alcorn State, that's who pays him his check, and a Grammar alumni. I'm a Southern <laughs> alumni. We are one. The Southwestern Athletic Conference slash HBCU and the Human Jukebox number one band in the land. Uh, there is a group in Tallahassee, Florida that um, that might have a claim to that there. Uh, let, let, let's, let's not forget about the marching 100. At the same time, don't, don't lose sleep now. The maroon and white has got to be in there somewhere. And don't and forget Charles. the sounds of dynamite, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> the sounds of dynamite, the marching 100, the human jukebox. Come on in the chat room. Who's number one? Who's number two? <laughs> Do we need to rank the bands? Coach Pettaway? <laughs> And of, uh, of course, that was the voice here. It was Roy Evans, producer today, CEO of the Black College Sports Network, and a FAMU graduate. Well, all right. Roy, are you two yeah. times a FAM graduate? No, no, just 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 what I'm an, I'm an alumnus. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm listen. I'm I'm a, I'm a claim what it is. I matriculated through the the halls and the hills of Tallahassee, Florida. I, I am I am several things. I am actually several classes short from three degrees. But see, I work for me, so I'm not really pressed about going back and getting them. Um, the experience and the knowledge that I gained at Florida A and M was life changing, and um, and it, it 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 had an impact on me far beyond what any conferred degree can do. Wow! And you remind me and somebody that's why, why he he to to hang up because of what he just said. Because they we, they. They, they do more to nurture uh, the growth of African Americans than any, any, any other institution. So we got to keep our HBCUs around. Yes, sir. Yes, I would agree with that. Well, gentlemen, when we bring Coach Petaway on, we, we talk uh, basketball, both collegiate, swag, NBA, and to piggyback on last week, and this is why you you hear Roy, he's he's going to be in this segment. Uh, we were talking about the NBA free agency. Now, Coach, I failed to mention one person who signed the richest NBA contract in the history of the NBA. You know who that guy is? They call him the Joker. That's well, I, I thought, well, you know, since two hundred million now, plus. But but you know now you know since then, uh, you know, Damian Little signed an extension yesterday, which will make him the highest paid player. You know, it, he'll be the first sixty million dollar uh, NBA player. And he, you know, his was signed late yesterday. So, but Joker okay. has the for for right now, Joker has the best contract out there that they're saying. And he deserved it. He's a two-time MVP. He can do it all. But now, with him taking that much money, will they be able to build a team around him? Because I think that's what's yeah. going on right now with free agency. That That's why you don't, you haven't seen uh, too much activity with Durant. You know, it, it's still up in the air as to where he's going to go, but everything has to fit. You know, it, it's got to fit in salary-wise. Um, as a coach, you wanted to fit in chemistry wise. Uh, there are people who, who don't want to see Durant in Miami uh, for, for different reasons. My thing is, how much will Miami have to give up to get him? You know, you don't want to destroy your team for one player. And then if you really look at it, I'm not so sure that Durant, the next stop is going to be it for him. The way he's been moving around mm. since his career started. He, he might just be a rental guy for a couple of years. He might be at his next landing spot for a couple of years, and he'll take off again. Wow. Yeah. yeah Roy, yeah. Well, Roy yeah. I, I, I know you have uh, some comments about uh, Durant, free agency, and, of course, let me say this. I found another Miami Heat fan, probably the number one Heat fan that I know. Uh-oh. Roy. <laughs> well, well, listen, let, let me, 
let, let me let me go ahead and qualify my Miami Heat fandom for y'all just so we can make sure that we understand that I was working in the original Miami arena the year the Heat came into the league. And I wow. lived two blocks from the original Miami arena with the Miami That's Heat. So I, I am a Ron Cycli, I like to say, Miami Heat fan. You know, we go we go back. I go back to the beginning and, and things of that nature. But, one, I wholeheartedly agree with, with Coach Petaway. One, I don't I, – and I, so I was saying that I'm not excited about getting Kevin Durant. The reason and my reasons were one, I don't think he's gonna be there to stay. I think he's I think he's being rented and he's and like coach said, he's gonna end up moving somewhere else to finish out and kind of do what he says. I'm also a little worried about what's really going on in in Brooklyn at this point. Because see, they made all those changes, they made all those moves to satisfy him. And now he yeah, we understand that the whole situation with Kyrie kind of switched everything. With him not wanting to do the vaccinations and all that kind of stuff. So it changes the dynamic. But this team invested a lot in him for him now to be saying, okay, I want to go. I want to trade to go somewhere else. So that shows you again, like he said, that, that that's a that's a level of loyalty that's not there. We see that with him as it stands, as it, as it goes, that the team will put all this stuff into him but won't do anything. One of the other things that I said is that I don't. I want us to go with somebody younger. We we need Jimmy Butler has about another three years of to me elite basketball in the position that he's in now. If we get us another young star who we can and when I say young, I'm say under thirty, somebody who maybe you know coming getting ready to go into their first or their second major contract from their rookie okay. contract and things of that kind of nature. That's why I mentioned Donovan Mitchell. Um, you know, as, as to me would be the ideal young man to come in there and build up so that we can have somebody that can take a lot of pressure off of Jimmy and let him do what he did in the playoffs when he wants to. You do that where he can where he can pick his moments and say, okay, yeah, it's my night tonight. Everybody that had their shot, now I'm going to come in and be who I am and do the stuff that I need to on the offensive end. If they did that, I think they can get another five years out of Jimmy Butler in the, in the, in the, in the program the way that we run it. The um the other thing about it now I, I actually am one of the few people I don't have a problem with giving up with what we what I think we would have to give up for him because they're saying Duncan um, Hero and and even possibly Lowry as much as I like Lowry at this stage of his career it's a whole bunch of players out there who are just as qualified as him to run point guard on that team. So now if we're just giving up those three players and even a couple of draft picks, I would be cool with that to get Kevin Durant because at that point, again, I know he's not going to be long-term, but we haven't given up the core of our team because Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero are not the future for Miami. Tyler Hero doesn't play enough defense. He is not going to last. He's, I believe he's going to turn around, unless he changes his mindset completely, he's going to turn out to be another white side. You were brought up in the program, but your work ethic showed that you're not built for the program. And that's the difference about Miami. If you're not playing defense, you're not going to be able to stay there. It's, it's right. just not going to happen. And so I, I would I would take him if that's all we had to give up for him. But, yeah, if we got to give up Bam or anybody, i like, no, nah, no, nah, y'all can go ahead. And listen, don't yep. sleep. Victor Oladipo, the came back. Yeah. He has a chip on his yeah. shoulder this year. Another thing with them signing Victor to what he did, and Carlos, we and you had this conversation off offline, so I'm going to jump off it after I say this because I think this is something people need to understand. I think about Miami, and we've done this before. They'll give Tyler Hero a decent contract, meaning one of the contracts that are a little larger. But see, they'll do that because now you can trade him for somebody <laughs> more more experienced and better because he's got that matching or higher enough contract so that the dollars match up. Because we we he is not going to stay in there not playing the defense that he's doing. Duncan Robinson's a shooter. You can find shooters all over the NBA right now. That's, that's not, especially if that's all you're asking them to do, you know, is shoot. So mm -hmm. Duncan Robinson, Hero, they can be gone, and they have two of the larger contracts, so it makes it easier to make them trade, trade uh, partners for, for other teams. Yep. Yep. See, Carlos, don't get it twisted. Carlos, don't get it twisted, baby. I do this sports analysis thing now. Yeah, hey, look, oh, I you know. And, 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 yep. <laughs> and, and I like it because now you are the number one Miami Heat fan. 
simply when you mention raw cycling, hey, that cuts the cake yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I came to the Miami Heat in two thousand and six, so you predate that. So I give all homage to Roy, yep. a true <laughs> Miami Heat fan, and it's good to be able to bounce back. You know, ideas with with, with Roy and Coach Petaway uh, about uh, the Miami Heat and Victor. Oladipo, yep. you're right. Yep. I just hope he's not part of any trade assets. But I don't want to out outthink myself on that. But guys, when it and, and Charles, when it's all said and done, where do you think you see Durant uh, heading to? I think. I think, in my opinion, I think Miami. I think that makes sense yeah, I don't for think me. So. I mean. Uh, I mean, based on just listening to Roy's breakdown of the pieces that the Heat would give up, I'll take that in a New York minute. And if Kevin Durant gets in there with Jimmy Butler, with that Miami Heat organization, with no drama, with no egos, you got Pat Riley, you got Spo, you you go in there if you're KD and, and you bring it together and help win a championship there without all the drama and all that other extra stuff, to me, in my opinion, I think Kevin Durant will stick and stay. Do I think he will be there long term? Uh, I don't quite see it. But if you win and you have a solid structure around you, I do think Kevin Durant would would be there. I mean, he's been at Golden State, obviously won championships there, didn't work out in Brooklyn. I think Miami would be a really good fit for him um, with that structure. That's just that's just the way I look at. It. I might be wrong about it, but. I think KD in Miami with, with, with Jimmy Buckets, that's a, that's a pretty good one-two punch. But I'll say this, Ke didn't Kevin Durant come out and say that he wants to play on a team with two bona fide stars? So what team out there would fit his salary with the two bona fide stars that he's talking about? He did make that demand. He wants to play with a team with two bona fide superstars. So that narrows the field quite a bit. Well, yeah, I think what he's looking for. He, yeah, he's looking for an opportunity to win another championship or, or a couple more championships. Now, if he were to go to Miami and they can keep uh, their, their big pieces, they have a shot at that. And I can see him going there winning a couple uh, titles. And see, Miami's already built that culture. Their their culture is there. They un, People that go there understand there's a certain way you got to play to be a part of that. And if Duncan Robinson and those other guys aren't going to play defense, they're not going to hang around Miami that long. You know, Pat Riley's probably working right now trying to figure out how to move them if they're not going to play defense. And, and see, Durant has already shown people he will bend his back on the defensive end. He'll play some defense. He will be a mm -hmm. good fit. But I still say <clears throat> don't overlook the fact that he might end up in Phoenix. Because I, right now, I don't think – uh, their center, he is not happy. He's not going to stay. And and to see with you, if you move his salary, that's a fit. That's a fit that they could do. They could get him in at Phoenix. But uh, you know that I, I think right now nobody's able to move. It's a log jam now because uh, because of Durant. Everybody's trying to wait to see what's going to happen with them, and then the other dominoes will start falling. Then you'll find out about Kyrie. Uh, I, I, I feel 100% uh, sure that they're going to move on from Kyrie. They're not going to try to keep Kyrie with the Nets. Now, whether or not they, they try to bend their back and, and make a deal happen with the Lakers, that's something different. But I just think that uh, the Nets are going to wash their hands with Kyrie. Uh, they're going to get rid of him, whether it's the L.A. or anybody else. They just don't want that negativity around their program anymore. And, and I think uh, – and, and that's justifiable. I, I know as a coach, man, that, that has to be tough, man, to deal with, with jokers like that. You don't have them for practice. You don't have them for games. Uh, they take off when they want to. Uh, I certainly couldn't deal with that a, as a coach when you're trying to build consistency, you're trying to build your team, and you don't have all your pieces, not because of an injury, because of what they, how they feel, uh, you know, different issues happening in society and then that prevents them from from being available as a coach you, you don't like that but as coaches we we know what happens when there's an injury we 
we are we are ready to uh, accept that and deal with that. But you're healthy, but you're still not available. That's a problem. It it, it goes from the top to the bottom, and and you can't have that as a coach if you want consistency and if you're trying to establish a culture. And I think that's what uh, Kyrie has done to that to that franchise. He screwed that up. Well, I, I also want to say this, Coach, real quick. You know, you talk about Kyrie Irving. I think that's – it's pretty much dead set, I think, that Kyrie's going to the Lakers. It's just a matter of making the pieces and making the money fit. And even LeBron has come out, what's been reported, LeBron will not sign an extension until Kyrie Irving is a, is a Laker. That's been reported. I just read it either yesterday or this morning. So – Wow. What, what that's doing the fail. Well, I, I – what LeBron you, he, wants, he just LeBron jinxed. Well, too I, much I'm power. Saying that. I, yeah, I, too I much power. It. Too much power. Le, LeBron wants Kyrie, so you can pretty much bet that at some point in the next couple of weeks, Kyrie will be in LA, and that the biggest question is where will KD go? I think that's that's the other point. And even coach to your point, you talked about Steve Nash dealing with whether or not Kyrie is there or not. Even the owners, based on reports I've read, is yeah. tired of all the drama. And so the, the right. owner wants KD and Kyrie to go. Just let's just blow it up and start over. And I think as an owner, one of the richest guys in the world, you know, you you don't want that. You want to win. You want to. You don't want all that drama. So I get it. And and I think once Kyrie and KD get moved, I do think you know Brooklyn will be able to move forward. But Charles, well, if if I was on if I was in management for the Lakers, there is no way. I would gamble on Kyrie because that's short term. Number one, I think you have to give up too much. You're giving up your future because I think the Nets already have made it known that they want draft picks. Mm -hmm. Well, they've only got two first rounders coming up. Why would they mortgage away their future? The Bronze only got a couple more years. So, so you're going to tell me that it's more important to try to win right now. What's going to happen when, when Bron leaves? That franchise will never be able to come back. Because they, they they would have given away their future, you don't have draft picks. So how are you gonna maintain your your roster when you got all these aging players? Now 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 they they did a good job by trying to get younger. I think they've signed maybe three or four uh, people already that'll make them a little younger. But when you look at the amount of money that LeBron and Davis and and Westbrook, man, your future you don't have a future with that kind of money tied up. And then you give it away your draft picks. So I think that's what Jeannie Buss is, is looking at. She's got some people in her ear that are saying, hey, this might not be the best move to allow Bron to hold us hostage to bring in Kyrie. I think they're giving up too much. And who's to say when he get when he gets out there, he may not want to play. They might be having a concert or something that he wants to go to. So he might decide, <laughs> I don't want to play tonight. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Look, 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 let me say, let, let me say this: that uh, th this is funny. Uh, Coach Graves, I appreciate you watching. He says, "Y'all giving Carlos false hope." And before that, he said the Heat has has it a, has a cold front coming through. Now, Coach Graves, his NBA team is the Knicks. They're the media <laughs> capital, but guess oh. what? They are re they're relevant. Yeah, well, I'm a coach, Graves. I love you to death, but uh, at least the heat is in the conversation. And I will Car say this to go, go ahead, Car Carlos. I'm sorry to jump in. Yeah, that this Roy. Go ahead. Being a Knicks fan automatically disqualifies him from anything, <laughs> anything <laughs> objective to say about the Miami Heat. It, yeah. it just, it just don't even work. He just <laughs> disqualifies him wholeheartedly. They still mad that Jeff Van Gundy was hanging on Lazo Morning League. Let that go, people. Just let it go. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. And I love Coach. I love Coach Gray's the the death. He he always gets after me about uh, the heat. But to a serious point, if you're looking at Brooklyn and management, you know, if, if I'm in that position, yeah, I don't want anybody that's not there. If they're not happy, I'm going to try to uh, help you out and and find you a place now but the brooklyn they they want a lot of assets back correct coach Petaway? Right. and so wow. they're looking at long term 
another team, Danny Ainge, is at Utah now, right? In management. Right. I'm seeing the same blueprint what he did in Boston. And look at Boston now. Donovan Mitchell, Roy brought it up, talking about, um, and, and other sources, him and Jimmy Butler real close, uh, getting him in, into Miami. But the trades that they've made with Gobert and stuff, you can see what they're doing, Coach. They're lining up draft picks for the yep. future. Yep. And if it works in, it worked in Boston, that's the same thing could happen in Utah. Also, a third team is going to be important, maybe a fourth team. To wherever Durant's going to help yep. facilitate that trade. And then I was looking at um, something on the national scope about Indiana Pacers, Dallas, Phoenix, and Brooklyn all trying to do something. So they've heard from everybody. It's a matter of now trying to put together those pieces. And I, for one, Roy, I think Durant – if you ask him, put him on the spot, I think he would like to be in Phoenix first, Miami second. Then you hear all about the, the Pelicans and Toronto. It's it's just going to be interesting to see how this all uh, plays out. But for, for Miami, they want to win now. I understand that the wind is there. But to Roy's point, and Coach Petaway and Charles, you still have to look at a long term go and to get some younger players in there and a two-way player is what Jimmy Butler is hero at the end of uh, the Miami Heat season coach um I say coach um no, I can't think of his name Pat Riley. Pat Riley thank you he must be talking about <laughs> Pat Riley said uh that hero has to develop. He has to become a two-way player. He's offensive there, but defensively is not. And as Roy talked about uh, the Miami culture, and, and Duncan Robinson didn't play at all in the playoffs, and then Hero struggled in the playoffs. So they are pieces that they could move to 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 get Durant. But I am more intrigued, believe it or not, with Donovan Mitchell. I'm more intrigued about about that. A younger player, dynamic. But I guess if you had a choice of getting Durant and Donovan Mitchell, the consensus is you go for Durant. But I'm very intrigued by Donovan Mitchell, guys. Right. I just think they need more size. You know, Donovan Mitchell is not mm -hmm. going to help them when it comes to the defensive end of the floor. They they, they need some more uh, size on that front line. And and uh, I, Durant would be the better fit. I, I just don't know how long he, he would want to stay there. In terms of the city, he, he couldn't be in a better city than Miami, uh, you know, if he's looking for entertainment or that kind of thing or lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, I'm like Roy now. With, with everything that has transpired out in, in uh, at the Nets, it, it, KD might be a part of the problem now. And so you could be potentially bringing a, a guy with problems into your franchise that, and you don't want – you don't want to mess up what you already have established because Miami tradition and their culture is well established and you don't need people coming in there uh, messing that up. He has to come in and, and just fit in and be a part like he did when he first went to Golden State. See, when he first got mm -hmm. to Golden State, he did everything the right way. Then when he and Draymond got into it, you know, that now it's time to go and, 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 uh, and do it, do it on your own. Well, he found out that he couldn't do it on his own. And now that, you know, there's even talk of him trying to go back to Golden State. Ugh. So that's still out there. You know, that, that's still another possibility. Because, you know, you got you got Curry and Draymond Green already out there and, and Clay Thompson. They're out there lobbying for Kevin to come back, for Durant to come back. So, yeah. you know, you, wow. you, that's you can't close Yeah, you can't close but, the door on, but, on them going but, back, but coach, back to them. Coach, there's that's interesting because uh, Curry had to quote unquote take a. He he told Durant, you know, this is this could be your this is your team. Now he took a step back. Now that he's won the title, without Durant on the team, will he be? I'm just asking, will he be willing to take a step back a, 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 again? And then get your everybody's comments, and we have to wrap it up and go to our next guest. 
Um, you remember Coach Petaway I talked about last week? For teams like Miami and, and, and Phoenix, Philadelphia, Milwaukee, which we haven't talked about them, but but Miami and Phoenix, close. They were the number one seeds coming out the East and the West. You're that close. Do you want to be like, let's make a deal? Remember that game show? Right. You are that close to a championship. Do you want to, in, you know, overturn, uh, uh, turn away a third of your roster or, or, or pieces of it when you're that close and try to add a piece that could push you over? You're that close. Do you do it, guys? Yeah, you do it. Uh, Coach, I got to jump in because I had to ask you a question, Carlos. I'm sorry. I want to ask Coach this question about something he just said. So I think the, the big issue, one with KD, that again, if we get him, I think it'll be fine. We can do some different things. But you mentioned something because one of the other challenges that I had with KD is, you know, what they call him, the slim assassin or whatever. His body. Slim Reaper. Slim Reaper, right. His body, yeah. he, he's going to have to change his game if he wants to stay elite in the next few years because he's taking too much of a beating on that body I think that's another reason that he is trying to leave and go places because every time they get there they're like 6'11 we need you in the post 7 foot we need you in the post we need you down low and that's just not his game the other thing for Miami though that I think in that situation whether we get KD or if we get somebody like a Donovan Mitchell just who's a prolific scorer because that's what we lacked in the playoffs we don't have enough scoring that was our only issue. We will get – there's already talk about Hassan Whiteside trying to come back. Dwight Howard oh. talking about coming to Miami. You know, oh, so man. we can no, – my point is that we can get a big man, especially if we get either one of those two top-level things. Now, I wouldn't – I would definitely don't want Whiteside back, but I would actually take a chance on Dwight Howard because I think he needs to prove himself, and he could do it in – and he can do it in Miami. But we have the opportunity to get some of these quality big men out there who can become an actual player, and then that still gives us time to cultivate two of the young guys that we got coming up behind them in Yurtson and, um, oh, man, of course I'm drawing a blank, but I forget the other wait, kid, but that, that's it. So Wait a minute, wait a minute, Roy. My, Miami lost P.J. Tucker, who's an undersized four, right? Yep, exactly. So, so, so Durant, from what you're saying, he, he could play multiple positions, but – at the power forward, uh, he's a nightmare for your traditional power uh, power forwards. But, but how many of those they, are left in the league? Know, it's it's <laughs> stretch four, it's stretch five. That, that's exactly. They all play. They all play the position that Kevin Durant plays. So it's easy to defend him. We need a true five in Miami. We got a true five who could play in the blocks with 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 Bam and run as, as long cool. as they can run the floor. And you put a five in there with Bam. Bam will become, Bam will become Kevin Durant light. I won't give him the scoring ability of Kevin Durant, but from the defensive side and what I think he will be able to score, if you put him in there with a true five who can get up and down on the floor, it'll be a whole different situation in Miami. Well, I'm gonna get on Bam because he kind of disappeared offensively. You know, he he's a freak of nature. He can defend one through five. But I need to him, him to get a nasty streak, start demanding that ball, and utilize. Offensive, he's got to get better. Now uh, we, we we put we put some pressure on the other players, but we haven't talked about Bam. But Coach Petaway, offensively, he's got to do a better job. He disappears at times. Right. right, but see, if you add a piece like Durant, that'll open things up for Bam in the post because they got to respect what Durant yes, does. Yes, sir. Got, That's the point. He, he That's won't see. He, he's going to take one and a half players to defend him. So that other half a guy, that's the guy that's, that, that, that they're dropping in on Bam to keep him from scoring. So if you got Durant out there, he will ease that pain. Uh, he will open up the paint, and, and Bam can become a better one-on-one -on -one scorer in the block for Miami. But bringing in another guard, that that's not to me. I, I don't think – Donovan Mitchell would be the answer. I think they've got to get – you got to get more scoring from the forward spot. Yeah, they struggle offensively, but you will not struggle if you get Durant because he can he can score on all levels, all three levels now. He can shoot the three. He can give you the mid-range, and you know when he gets ready to go to the basket, he can go to the basket. He posts up on people that he know he can handle down there. So I think he would be the best fit. 
I, I'm not, this is me personally, I'd rather have the rent over, over Donovan Mitchell for a and championship. I, and I, and I, I think and, you're and closer Charles to the championship with the rent. Mm -hmm. and, and Charles, Kelvin Lowry, you know, uh, I've heard had some personal issues. You know, people take have taken shots about his weight, his body. Yep. Let's 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 see if he's back. Let's see if his body will it change, and and if not, but then another fact that he's up in age. Correct? What he's about thirty seven. Yep. Yeah, he's getting up in age. Now I don't think he's that old, but he's up. He's up. He's mid thirties. Yep. Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. I do think any trade with Miami, Kyle Lowry will be in, a part of that trade. Um, I also it's been it's been reported that Jimmy Butler has talked to the Heat brass and he has said, "I want Donovan Mitchell and I want Kevin Durant." He has that has been reported. Wait, so, wait a minute, he wants yeah. both or one or the other? Wait a minute, which is both? It? Both? Oh, come yeah, on. he wants. It, it would be an you, incredible trade they to pull, pull that off. off. I'm right. going yeah, to bed for a year. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I'm just saying that's that's what he has said that he <laughs> he wants. He wants Donovan Mitchell and KD. Now, will it fit? I don't know, but that's that's what he has said. I think he wants Donovan Mitchell to try to help sell Kevin uh, Kevin Durant to come as well. So now you got now you got Jimmy buckets, you got Durant, and now you got Donovan Mitchell. And I remember KD said he wants two bona fide stars, whatever team that he goes to. So if that there are your two bona fide stars right there. You got you got Jimmy Butler and Donovan Mitchell. That fits his requirements if he still sticks with that. But I, I I'm I'm just saying typically in the NBA, when these superstars, what they ask for, they typically get. Whether it's a trade, if if Kevin Durant wants to go to Miami, Typically, that team will accommodate him wherever that, that player wants to go, whether it's LeBron to the Lakers, LeBron to Cleveland, LeBron to Miami, however it goes. I just I just think Kevin Durant, I see him in Miami. I think Phoenix with Booker getting his money, I think it's going to be a lot that has to be a lot has to happen for him to go to Phoenix. But I do see Miami being the front runner right now. Hmm. Well. Interesting conversation. Um, I, I see everybody's taking shots at me in the chat room. Uh, <laughs> about the Miami uh, Leo says, y'all, y'all, he people don't know which direction y'all want to go in. <laughs> I know what direction. Championships. Championships. Yep. There That's you right. go. Championships. And we st <laughs> listen. We're but we can we can talk enough trash if we want to. Cause see, we stay above mediocre most of the time. We up in the upper <laughs> echelon. So uh, I hope that's not the New York Knicks fan again, but I'm going to let that go. <laughs> no, no, but now I'm going to go look at uh, their transactions and, and, and their schedule for the upcoming <laughs> upcoming year. The best thing about them, they're in the, in, in the media mecca. And yep. so, uh, and, and Spike Lee and Coach Graves, yep. fan number one. <laughs> <Knicks> fan <laughs> <in Louisiana. laughs> Guys. I appreciate it. Coach Petaway, stay safe, and uh, we'll talk with you next week. Maybe we'll have a more conversation and news about the NBA uh, free agency. And um, also, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll talk some uh, swag basketball. Take an early okay. look at who's going to win it or gotcha, in the conversation. Gotcha. Take okay. care, Coach. All right, guys. Uh, hey, thanks. Uh, everybody say Stay safe and God bless, man. All right, Thank coach. you, Coach. Uh, let me say this. Next week, um, AD Chris Robinson, University of Arkansas Pine Bluff, uh, we'll have him on. I reached out to uh, somebody Coach Petaway knows, Betty Austin. Uh, trying to get her on, on the show. And then I'm going to reach out to uh, Charles. You'll love this one. Get him on video streaming. One of my adversaries, a former board member at Southern University, Tony Hotshot Clayton. That will be must see, <laughs> a must see show. I'm gonna, I'm gonna invite him to, 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 to come on. The guy who uh, gave me a hug when I walked across the stage in 2010, <laughs> the summer <laughs> commencement at Southern University. And I had people that took pictures of that and they thought Tony had put a knife in my back. 
<laughs> because we've we gone back and forth over the years. But I want to say this about Tony Clay. One time I got my credentials with hell at Southern University under the former AD, Mr. LaFleur. And I was walking from class and uh, Tony was talking to some dignitaries and he saw me and he waved and he asked me, what's going on, Carlos? I say, they took my credentials, but that's all right. He said, they can't do that. I'll have that corrected. Matter of the next day. That day is just <laughs> So as much as I give Tony a hard time, I have to thank him for that. But I'm going to reach out to him and see if we can get him on. Let's do this, Charles. I got to take a quick time out. We'll visit with Willa Brown for the final segment. You're watching the Carlos Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports Network. We are making the virtual HBCU experience available wherever you live through Stillman Online. We offer online degrees in business, criminal justice, psychology, and religion. Stillman also offers technology badges in cybersecurity and data analytics. You can participate in all student activities, fraternities and sororities, internships, graduation ceremonies, and much more. Apply for admission today at stillman.edu. Stillman College, where we prepare you for a different world. T. Madden and Associates is a sophisticated and experienced law firm located in your neighborhood. We're turning injury to cash. T. Madden and Associates obtained almost $2 million for my injury. They turned my injury to cash. Now, we can't guarantee how much your injury is worth, but we've recovered millions for our clients. Call T. Madden and Associates at 833-PAID-123. That's 833-PAID-123. Are you ready? It's time. The inaugural Urban NerdCon is coming to Montgomery, Alabama, July 29th to the 31st. Blurds, nerds, and geeks from across the universe will converge on the capital city to see celebrity guests such as The Last Dragon, Tybok, Megan Tandy, and voice actor Dave Fenoy. Hey, how you doing? I'm voice actor Dave Fenoy with a shout out to all my geeks, freaks, and urban nerds. Just want to let you know I'm going to be there and I want to meet you at the Urban NerdCon Gaming and Cosplay event. It's happening July 29th through the 31st in Montgomery, Alabama. Hope you want to meet me as much as I want to meet you. So join us by visiting TheUrbanNerdCon.net for ticket and vendor information. This will be the premier blurred event in the universe. TheUrbanNerdCon.net. Our heroes, our villains, our stories, everyone's con. See? For 200 years, Montgomery, Alabama has been making history by people who had the courage to stand up for change. Today, this riverfront city has been reborn, embracing the past and looking forward to the future. From the National Memorial for Peace and Justice to the stage of the Alabama Shakespeare Festival, this is where history was and is made. We are proud to call Montgomery home, and together, we can be the change. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. Oh, that spin class was brutal. Well, you can try using the Buick's massaging seat. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. Can I use Apple CarPlay to put some music on? Sure. It's wireless. Pick something we all like. Okay, hold on. What's your Buick's Wi-Fi password? Buick Envision 2021. Oh, you should pick something stronger. That's really predictable. That's a really tight spot. Don't worry. I used to hate parallel parking. Me too. Hey. Really outdid yourself. The all-new Buick Envision, an SUV built around you. 
all of you. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushion. <laughs>
So I think it's going to be a difficult challenge either way it goes. Uh, you know, I think we need to fine tune uh, those things that we are currently doing well. And I say we, I mean, in terms of all HBCUs, we need to fine tune those things that we're doing well. You know, while we continue to look for ways to improve our product and, and do better. And it's going to take an effort, not just from uh, our alums. It's going to take an institutional effort. It's going to be a, a concerted effort, so to speak, in terms of everybody rolling up their sleeves and getting their hands dirty, uh, not just uh, us depending on one particular group to, uh, to go all in. Now, for the record, you are a North Carolina a and alum, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so when you said earlier, you, is there a plan for them to get the necessary resources from, from a business standpoint? Because you said um, what around their budget was last year and then now going to see AA. It was that $25 million is, is kind of what the average is in the conference uh, for institutions? Or that's the average. That was the, the lower, the average. Okay. That's, that's so the why average not a plan? Of, well, I mean, right now, uh, there's nothing out there written or otherwise to explain mm -hmm. how that shortfall is going to be made up. Not to say that there's no plan there. It's just to say that no plan has been publicly put forth so that everybody can see or have an opportunity to buy in or, or what have you. And, uh, you know, without that, you know, how are you going to get your alums to buy in? How are you going to get your fans to buy in? You know, everybody wants to know, you know, how, how we're going to make up that, that shortfall. And like I said, it's going to be a problem for you know, all HBCUs who want to ultimately try to take that next step, whatever that next step may be, you know, how we're going to make up those dollars. Guys, correct me if I'm wrong, but let's say, for example, if as, as a conference or a combined effort, say of the MEAC and, and the SWAC, they come together and they decide to move up to division one in all all sports because they're in division one in all sports except football correct now you're talking about having to fund from 63 scholarships to no is it 63 to 85 that's mm -hmm. that's 22 scholarships plus insurance you know as far as the athletes when when they get there and all of that 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 is a that is a big jump right guys you know, and not only that, Carlos, you're talking about equipment, you're talking about travel, mm -hmm. you're talking about, uh, you know, you, you, you have to pretty much put all that out there on the table. And that's, that's not a small nut to crack by, by any means. And, you know, that, that's just football, you know, and if you talk about combining the SWAC and the, and the MEAC, you know, travel is going to be a big issue because, you know, that footprint will expand from, Dover, Delaware to uh, Houston, Texas, or what have you, or and beyond. And, uh, you know, while, you know, football may be able to cover uh, their particular issues, that sort of thing, your revenue sports are really going to catch it, you know, because can you imagine, you know, volleyball game, playing a volleyball game, going from Delaware to, to Houston? You know, or, you know, something of that nature or, or track and field or something like that. It, it's the costs are going to be astronomical. And if we're not prepared for those things, then, you know, it, it's going to be really tough to, to make it happen. Charles and, and, and Wheeler is stating his reluctance to uh, the move if that were to happen. And Willa, don't let me put words in your mouth from, so what you're saying is FCS and football stay there and try to uh, be the best that you can be in FCS while fine tuning and getting some things done to be able to uh, be able to compete at a higher level within I, I would, the FCS. 
I, I would say yes. And, uh, you know, be the best where you are, you know, and mm -hmm. once you become the best where you are, you know, and show that you're ready to take that next step upward, then by all means, take that next step upward, you know, providing that you can uh, afford it, providing that you can take care of all the nuances that go along with that. And, uh, you know, but to go just for the sake of going, you know, to me, that's, that's, that's not getting it done. You know, you're putting the kids at a disadvantage, you're putting your institution at a disadvantage, you know, and while your alums may like it right away, they're not going to like it when you're getting your head beat in on Saturday, uh, you know, by some astronomical scores, you know, because you're not able to keep up with the Joneses in terms of, you know, the facilities, all the things that they bring to the table that you're not able to to bring to the table. That novelty, you know, that that, that shiny stuff, you know, it, it wears off very quickly. You know, it, it's <laughs> good at the beginning and, you know, you're happy, you're jumping up and down, you're ready to be there, you know, but after a few of those L's and a few of those, you know, head bangers, that sort of thing, you know, you come back down to earth really quickly and you kind of start to question yourself in terms of why did we make this move? You know, so like I said, my thing is, you know, be the best where you are. Once you've established that you're the best where you are consistently, and that's the key word, consistently, you know, and, and you think you're ready to take that next step forward, if there's a plan in place to do so, you know, that's not going to damage the status quo, you know, that's not going to put the institution uh, uh, in a bad way financially or otherwise, you know, that you're going to be able to pay for, that your alums are going to, you know, be wholehearted in there with you in terms of donating and, you know, things of that nature, then by all means, do, do what you feel is right. Charles, I see you shaking your head. You agree. I absolutely agree. And I've been saying this on your show, Carlos, for a long time. We are in football. We are an FCS conference, football championship subdivision conference. Why not try to be the best in the FCS? Now, Commissioner Dr. Charles McClellan and I talked about this last year at Media Day in the postseason, in the playoffs. There's mm -hmm. no financial incentive when you go to the playoffs. He admitted it. He said it's not going to change. So when you look at the dollars and cents there, that's something that we have to talk about. But I think with FAMU being in the FCS playoffs last year and the notoriety of being in the playoffs and playing for a championship, I think that will help from a notoriety standpoint, not a financial standpoint. But I think it's just unrealistic for us to sit here and say that we're going to move up to an FBS conference. You talked about the scholarships. You talked about the travel. I mean, it's a struggle and I hate to say it, but it's just reality. It's a struggle for some of our schools to fund 63 scholarships in football. So now you're talking about 85? Come, I mean, I, I think, you know, I just think it's just unrealistic. It's not going to happen. And I just think we need to focus on the Celebration Bowl. We need to focus on getting a team or maybe two into the FCS playoffs and being the best that we can be in the football championship subdivision in football. That's then, where we are. And, then, and that's what we need to, that's where we need to lean. Anything else above that. And, and we look, we've seen teams, uh, Wheeler Brown that went up to the FBS level only to come back down to FCS. Was mm -hmm. that, was that, mm -hmm. was it Florida and &M, I want to say, I can't remember what, what school mm -hmm. it was. Yes. They tried, they, they tried actually to take that jump and they moved one back down. Time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, it's mm -hmm. it's not realistic. It's not sustainable. It's not going to happen, in my opinion. And I think we need to be the best that we can be in football at the FCS level. Play more of these games, Carlos, as you and I have talked about. You know, we're playing McNeese. Um, we open up with Stephen F. Austin talking about Alcorn. We need to continue to do that as a conference. Get that at large bid. Try to get an automatic, which I don't think is going to happen because of the scheduling and be the best we can be there. But this FBS talk to me is just a pipe dream in my opinion. And you gotta play those guys, not just play those guys, Carlos, you gotta beat those guys, you know, and you gotta beat those guys consistently, you know, and uh, you know, you get to the playoffs, it's just not enough to just walk in the door and say, we're here, you know, we gotta get past the first round. We gotta get past the second round. 
you know, and, and that's how you establish, you know, superiority, that sort of thing. It, it, it's just not mm-hmm. good enough to say that we made it to the playoffs this year. You know, fam, you can say they made it to the playoffs, but you know, they got knocked out, got spanked in the first round. You know, they, they, you become an afterthought really, really quick. And uh, so, you know, it, it, it's about taking those kind of steps. You know, A&T is going out to play North Dakota State uh, in September. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, I don't know who scheduled that one, but, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to be an eye-opener in, in every way. And, uh, you know, so they'll get an opportunity to see how the other half lives for real and, uh, and what it's going to take in order to get – to that level, uh-huh. Now, Willow, you remember the discussions we, and that's how we met uh, at, at Swag Media Day. And we had yeah. some animated discussions about kind of what you and, and what Charles has said. And, and, and for the record, I, I, I agree, especially the part about playing those teams during the regular season, getting mm-hmm. familiar with them and beating them, you're correct, and consistently beating them to your point you go Mm -hmm. to the playoffs and Mm. you you don't get far for those who want to to participate in the fcs playoffs now i for the record am not a fan of going but i wonder why because the financial reward is just not there and and you remember discussions we used to have about indirect exposure and direct exposure someone explain Mm -hmm. indirect exposure because i want direct monies (laughs) <laughs> and that's just not going. That's just not going to happen. But for those who follow teams that want to do that and go to playoffs, I under, I understand. But I absolutely agree, guys. If you, if that's your goal, to get to the celebration or get to the FCS playoffs, you got to start playing them during the regular season, and you're going to have to do home and home and start having some success. So I guess I'm saying I, I'm agreeing to that part. You know, as far as the F- FCS playoffs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I will say this, Carl. Well, I think one of the biggest, one of the biggest FCS FCS games of this football season will be in Jackson, mm-hmm. Mississippi, when Jackson State hosts Campbell. Hosts Campbell. Okay, that's a battle of the top two recruiting classes in the FCS. That's one to watch. And I know JSU fans and maybe some administrators have talked about being the best in the FCS. Well, here we are. You have a chance to do that. Uh, if you don't make it to celebration, you have a chance to go to the playoffs. Fam, you fell short. They went to the playoffs. We're 0 for. The SWAC is 0 for in the FCS playoffs. We haven't won a game yet. You know, Alcorn's been to two, 92 and 94. Didn't win those. Fam, you didn't win last year. So we're, we're going to see. We're, going to, we're seeing more of these matchups, the Northwestern States, the Stephen F's, the Sam Houston's, the Campbell College. As, as Mr. Wheeler Brown said, North Dakota State, that's a doozy. Prairie View went there a few years ago, went to North Dakota State, and we saw what happened there. But that's what we have to do. To be the best, you got to play and beat the best. We'll see what happens in the upcoming and, season. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to piggyback on, on what was just said. You know, I've never been a big fan of, you know, five star, four star, all this sort of thing, all that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So, you know, for me, you know, having a good recruiting class is great and that's all good, but it's got to transfer into putting the pads on and getting out there on the field and actually showing what you can do. Uh, I, I did some research on camp where I think they lost their last three or four games last year. Yeah, so I'm going to be hesitant in terms of anointing them the next FCS power, you know, even though they had a good recruiting class, that sort of thing, and I readily acknowledge that. Uh, I mm-hmm. just think that, you know, and they, they got a good coach. There's no doubt about that, and I think in the future they may be a power to be reckoned with. But I'm not one to put a whole lot of stock on – young kids coming in the door uh, and really looking to them to kind of take me to the promised land right away. Yeah, so if, if mm-hmm. Campbell doesn't uh, meet expectations 
coming out the door. You know, I mean, the, the proof and the pudding for them will be two, three years from now, you know, when they've gotten those kids in and developed them fully, you know, that, that sort of thing. A&T plays Campbell this year also. So it, it's mm-hmm. going to be interesting to see, you know, how all that, how that matches up, that sort of thing. And, you know, but it's, it's going to be a test. There's no, there's no doubt about that. And, you know, Carlos, like we said, ain't no money in the FCS playoffs. Never been, never will be, you know, and it's never been about the money for the FCS mm-hmm. playoffs. You know, and you don't go into the playoffs to make money. You know, you go into the playoffs to see how good you are, to measure yourself up against the best in the country, that sort of thing. And, you know, so that's, that's, that's why you go in. You know, as a matter of fact, it costs you to host a home game in the playoffs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you got to put up, I, I think, close to $100,000 up front, you know, just to even get into the discussion to try to host a first-round playoff game. You know, so, I mean, it's, there's, there's no money involved. There's not going to be any money involved. So, you know, you have to throw that out the window. You know, if you're looking to be the best on the field, you know, you're not necessarily going to be the best at the bank also. You know, and that's, well, that's, just, that, that's just the way it is. Right. And, and, and to your point, and, and I understand now, I'm, I'm going to refer back to – social media and um you know fans get excited now five stars four stars the transfer portal um i I don't really get into all of that you know i don't get excited you know if if and southern is my the school i graduated from if if southern is getting three stars or two stars you know i'm happy with that but there is a segment that will get all frustrated if they're not getting the five stars and the four stars. So once again, you're a former athlete, uh, Will. I just don't get excited about all of that. It is getting at student athletes into your program and developing them. And at the end of the day, mm-hmm. when they leave, they got – the degree in hand, and they become better players and, and individuals. I know that sounds cliche as an old school, but man, a lot of people are literally going mad. We didn't get a five mm-hmm. star. We didn't get a four star. We didn't. Hell, that is just unrealistic to me. It, it, it's more of who student af- the students and players go to camps, and when they go to camps, you'll notice they'll get. Stars, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I, I just that's just me. I am really, mm-hmm. I'm really not into all of that. I agree. I agree with you a hundred percent. Yeah, but like you said, you know, our fans, our alums, they get all upset. You know, if you don't have any four or five stars on the roster, they want to know what's wrong with you. You know that that sort of thing. But like you said, it's about developing those that we have. You know, and that's that's the thing that, that I'm always looking for. You know, are our coaches a developer of talent? You know, and it's got to be that way. Are our, our strength and conditioning coaches, you know, putting our kids through the paces and getting them bigger, faster, stronger? You know, because that's, that's where it's going to count. You know, and, and the bottom line is, you know, we can all almost get three and four stars at wide receiver and running back. And, and uh, you know, defensive back, that sort of thing. Can we get them on the offensive line? Can we get them on the defensive line? You know, and, and a lot of times that's where we as HBCUs, we come up short, up front. You know, not at the skill positions. You know, it's a center guard and tackle. You know, it's a defensive tackle and then defensive end. You know, those kinds of things, you know, where, where it really counts up front. So, you know, we, yeah. we, we have to do better in terms of educating the masses in terms of exactly the effort that it takes in order to produce winning football programs on a regular basis. And, and Charles, I, I've been, let me just be honest, I've been guilty of that. 
you know, you look at the receivers, quarterbacks, DB, the excitement positions, but you know, as Will alluded to, and, and talking to several coaches, coaches on the staff now, former staffs, you know, it, it starts up front, O-line and D-line. That's where the game is really, really won, but they're not a, it's not a glamorous position or positions. So I, I've been guilty of that, but I, I, I'm glad that now I know better. <laughs> for lack of a better term, and, and you got to look up front on both sides of the yeah. Line. I mean, you know, I talked to our offensive coordinator Elliot Ratt the other day. Had a long conversation with him talking about the offense, and the, of course, we talked a lot about the quarterback. But he he said all corn state football has to get bigger up front, and I have the depth chart right here and breaking it down. He said, bottom line, you know, it used to be. Be red offense, you needed smaller offensive linemen to be able to get out in space. But this year, the Braves, and I saw the players the other day in the cafeteria, and they're, they're, they're huge up front. So getting those quality athletes, getting good athletes, getting size, I think that's important because without all of that, and, and Carlos, I know you are big in the trenches. You talk more about up front than you, than you do with the skill positions because you know how important that is. You're a big, you're a big trenches guy, which is, which is great because that's where games are won and lost. So I do think if we can get more of those type of kids to come to our schools, I think it'll it'll make things so much easier as far as quarterbacks, running backs. It'll make the offense exciting. It'll make the defense exciting because they can get to the quarterback. I think it'll be better for everybody involved. Mm-hmm. Willa, Willa, we're going to have fun now in our, in our last <laughs> few minutes here, maybe 10 minutes or less. Um, there was an article, Claren Ledger, some of the toughest places to play in the conference. You uh, formerly in the conference. Have you had a chance to see, uh, look at the article? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. I heard you guys okay. talking about it earlier. <laughs> Let, let's kind of go through it quickly. And uh, I haven't been to every stadium, but as you, former director of athletics in the conference, I'm sure you were able to visit the most. Coming in at number 12 was Mississippi Valley State. Now, I won't bore the audience about the only time I went in the 80s, and uh, I, I, I'm still frightened to this day. I'm sure it's much better, but that was the longest, <laughs> longest trip coming from Baton Rouge to, uh, to eat a meal. Uh, 11, Texas Southern, and it goes on to tell you the stadium's name, the average attendance, the record. It's been the record for the past decade. Arkansas Pine Bluff, 10th. Haven't been to their new stadium, but uh, number nine, Alabama A&M. Got a chance to go there. Once Jackson State. Willer, you, you helped me out one time coming there. <laughs> I mean, it was crowded and it was people everywhere. And I see Willer on the um, golf court. He, get, he gives me a ride. And I come in and I beat all the crowds. So now nah, that was a good one. But uh, Jackson <laughs> State number eight, Grambling. I have never been to Grambling Stadium. Shame on me. If I don't get there, Charles, I am going to once again become a monk and I will go to Tibet <laughs> and I'll show my eyebrows because I, that's on the bench, uh, Mark. I, I, I've got to uh, make it there. Number six, Alabama State. Five, Prairie View. Four, Bethune-Cookman. Three, FAMU. Oh, goodness, I've been there. That is a humbling <laughs> experience. Number two, A.W. Mumford Stadium at Southern University. And number one, Alcorn State. What do you think about that, uh, Wheeler? Have you been to – how many stadiums? Well, I've, I've, been, been? I've been to most of those stadiums. I don't know that, you know, I would rank – Bethune's uh, stadium as high as it's been ranked uh, in terms of tough place to play. Uh, you know, my number one probably would have been Southern, no doubt about it, I think. You know, and, and Alcorn would probably be 1A uh, because those are, mm. to me, the two toughest places to play, no doubt about it. You know, I mean, the fans are right on top of you and, you know, they're giving it to you 24-7 and you know, you're catching it from the parking lot on in. And, uh, you know, that's, that's those are the kind of places, you know, if, if you're an athlete, 
you know, you thrive, you live for that for that kind of environment. You know, uh, uh, I would put Jackson State's uh, place up there, but yeah. the only thing that I the, the drawback with Jackson State is that the stands are so far away from the field. And so to me, you don't get that I'm on top of you type feeling that you do at mm. some of these other places. And so when we talk about a tough place to play, I'm always looking at situations where, you know, the people are right on top of you, you know, they're in your ear, you know, if you're on the sideline, you can almost feel them breathing down your neck, you know, if you're a player, that sort of thing and stuff. To me, those are the situations that, that make it tough to play, not just a place where you got a whole lot of people in the stadium and, you know, they're making a little noise, that sort of thing. The <laughs> further away they are, to me, the less intimidating they are or can be. You know, and even at FAMU, they're right there on top of you, even though, you know, the stadium is fairly large, that sort of thing. They're right there on top of you. They're in your ear 24-7, that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's, some, it's some tough places to play in, in the SWAC. But like I said, I would list, you know, Southern and, and Alcorn as one and 1A one and probably FAMU, you know, right, right behind that. And then you can stack all the rest of them pretty much however you want to stack them and, you know. But uh, I, I don't know, Carlos, just because it was a long ride to Mississippi Valley, I don't know that makes that a tough place to play. Just make it a long <laughs> ride, I guess. I don't know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, I'm a, te- I'm, a, I'm a teenager, and I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to the ends of the earth. And, and, and I guess maybe it's because God, God rest their souls, my grandmother grandfather, they didn't drive fast. They believe in if the speed limit is at 60, they're going 50. So you factor in that. And then they're older. They have to stop a little bit. And and then a, a, a severe whipping occurred. Uh, had a young man named, uh, I think you heard of him, uh, Willie Tyne and Jerry Rice. <laughs> it was a long trip back. And, and I love... Uh, when Southern plays Jackson, he, but that atmosphere, and, and to me, Will, the fan bases are just alike. That's why they clash them, but they're just alike. They're arrogant, mm-hmm. they're cocky. But I tell you what, and I don't know how much you put those intangibles into the findings, but all corn state. I'm going to be honest with you. Going there two years in a row, then a regular regular season game, and uh, that, that chant, I'm going to tell you, that chant stayed in my ear for at least two, well, we'll say a week. I mean, and then, you know, losing the, the championship game and walking off the, uh, you know, off the press box, they, they say, Charles, Charles told me, where did they go? Man, we got out of there. <laughs> and the fireworks going, those are some of the things behind the scene that, you know, you know, trying to make it to your car and then that long drive, Back to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Yes, Indiana. indeed. Wow. Yes, indeed. My goodness, I'm but telling you. I'm telling that, you. That <laughs> that is a but it's a it's a beautiful beautiful campus though, and uh, a yes, lot of them crazy. Oh, yes, it is. Going into Alcorn, mm-hmm. but uh, the next time I visit Alcorn, I hope it's better results. I think it will be this time. <laughs> In Dooley and staff, we trust. <laughs> I can tell you this. I, I'm uh, let the blue and gold come out. Been, come out now. <laughs> from what I've been, from what from what I've been looking at, you know, uh, uh, Dooley and, and his guys have been quietly putting together a great class. Yeah, I mean, and not getting a whole lot of hoopla with it, that sort of thing. But you know, if you are a, a person of quality and you look into the kids that they've been signing and the transfers that they've bring in, you know, it's nothing but quality coming through the door at Southern University right now. I mean, they're not getting the hoopla that, you know, Dion gets, you know, when he signs kids, that sort of thing. But, you know, Dooley is quietly putting together a monster there. And, you know, if, if folks don't watch out, you know, he's, he's going to surprise some folks. But he won't surprise folks like, us because you know we see what what he's putting together but 
you know, he is quietly putting together something special there, I think. And Charles, I still have my eye on Coach McNair. <laughs> I mean, outstanding coach and, and a good guy. And a good guy. So I got I got an eye over there, but I got two eyes on Southern because that's my alum. I, I don't worry about other schools as much. I see what's going on, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, I, I hope everybody in our conference they have a great upcoming uh, academic and athletic year, multiple sports, football included, and uh, we just get better as institutions and we get better a as a conference. And, and the MEAC, I, I, I wish them the best, Commissioner Stills and, and, and the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference, because they still are HBCU family. Guys, close the comments and we'll, we'll, we'll get out of here. Well, yeah, with well, Carlos, my my top stadiums quickly. Of course, all corn. I'm going with them. Number one, I agree. Southern number two. I got. I took FAMU out because I haven't been to, to Florida. I've been to Tallahassee, so I got all corn one. Yeah. Southern two, Grambling three. I got Jackson State four. And this might be the surprise for me. Mississippi Valley is one of the toughest places to play. Rice Totten Stadium is a really tough place to play, especially when they're playing well. I got Bethune six. I was there. You know, that, that crowd, they, they don't see much of that stadium. But when, when they get into it, that's a tough venue. Bama State 7, Prairie View 8, Texas Southern 9, Alabama A&M uh, number 10, and UAPB 11. So I didn't rank FAMU because I haven't been to Tallahassee. That That's my top stadiums to me as far as Wait, wait a minute, Charles. Hmm. Charles, we're going to have to argue as always after the show. You got right. Jackson State <laughs> behind Grambling? Come on, Charles. I, I, yeah. Some people the whole say – the whole should it be two or three. The hole is the hole. It is tough to win in the hole. <laughs> we call Eddie Robinson Memorial Stadium the hole. Yes, yes. I'm putting Grambling over Jackson State. Yes, sir. It's tough to win in the hole. We have experienced that ourselves. Now Jackson went in there and won for the first time in eight years in Coach Sanders' first game at Grambling. Yes, Grambling wasn't that good. Yes, but Grambling, when Grambling is Grambling. They are very tough to beat at in the hole. So, yes, I do have Grambling over Jackson State as far as toughest stadiums. Yes. I just like I just like arguing with you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Will, those are comments. <laughs> well, yeah, I, uh, yeah I, I, I've stated my, you know, preferences or non-preferences in terms of the stadiums. Uh, I am going to be, well, I'm going to try to be a candidate for the vacancy at Alabama A&M. And uh, so mm -hmm. I'm going to toss my name in the hat and, you know, kind of see what, what happens with that. But uh, you know, looking forward to the football season all the way around. And, uh, you know, our kids are here. They're working out hard, that sort of thing. And, no, we're not picked to be very high in the SIAC new coach and all that sort of thing. But I think we're going to surprise some people. And uh, we're, we're going to, uh, quote, unquote, shock the world. And uh, so, but it's been a pleasure to, you know, be on with you guys, as always. And, you know, I'm always watching from afar. You know, you guys doing excellent work each and every Saturday, no doubt about that. And it's always a pleasure to, uh, you know, chime in and, and to be able to, you know, put forth some, quote unquote words of wisdom. And uh I want to thank you guys for having me again. Don't hang up, Wheeler. We'll I won't. appreciate it. yeah. Roy Roy wants you to hang on after the show. He wants to talk about and uh, next time we'll we'll get into more of the SIAC. I have some colleagues on the Black College Sports Network that are uh more uh, expert experts at the SIAC, but now I know if I wanna uh talk with someone i can add you along with my colleagues uh, about definitely, the siac definitely. and um so I, I appreciate you enjoy yourself this weekend and uh hey we'll talk again real soon will all right all right well that's gonna do it we're overdue uh to end the show but i appreciate everyone good afternoon once again to everybody i appreciate you in the chat room uh roy producer today's show Charles and all of our guests until next Saturday at 11 a.m.
for another edition of the Coles Brown Show right here on the Black College Sports <laughs> Network. Until next time, peace and God <laughs> bless. There's that chant. Go Jags. Go Swag. Go <laughs> Take care, everyone. <laughs>